Welcome back to Frontiers in Science, a conference in honour of Professor Sien Yang at 100. May we now invite Professor Gong Jiang Bin up on stage to chair for the afternoon session. Good afternoon, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you had a good lunch and a good conversations over the lunch. Uh, welcome back to the afternoon session. Uh, let me first introduce myself. My name is Gong Jiangbin. I'm the head of the physics department of the National University of Singapore. It's my great honor to be asked to the chair the first three sessions for this afternoon. Our first speaker today is uh, for this afternoon is Professor Tan Men Chuan. He's uh, my colleague at NUS. Uh, Professor Tan received his PhD uh, back about 2006 or two, 2007. Uh, then he did his postdoc research at Institute of Advanced Studies at Princeton and later at Caltech. This morning we heard something uh, quite a lot about the Young Mills theory. And now this time we see some real stuff because Professor Time is going to share with us uh, more about Young Mills theory from a mathematical physics perspective. Professor Time, the floor is yours. All right. Uh, thank you, Prof Gong, for the very nice introduction. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for this opportunity to speak here today. It's a privilege and honor to be able to speak among so many eminent speakers. I apologize that I can't be there physically. Uh, I trust everyone is having a good time uh, down in uh, NTU. So without further ado, let me just uh, share my slides. Okay. Right. So since this is a conference in honor of uh, Professor Sien Yang, uh, to whom I'm actually, you know, my work is pretty much uh, in, uh, indebted to his uh, theory of Young Mills, right? And uh, so, so I would like to tell you guys today about the Mills theory and the physical mathematics revolution of the 21st century. All right. Okay. So the outline of my talk will be the following. So I'll start with some introduction about the forces in particle physics, essentially the standard model of particle physics, and how Young Mills theory is a central part of you know uh, you know describing the forces in particle physics, and then I will go on to tell you how Young Mills theory also forms an integral part of more modern theories of particle physics, essentially supersymmetric uh, particle physics, supersymmetric quantum field theory. And then I'll go on to describe how Young Mills theory also features in string theory, all right? So even the, uh, string theory is a theory of strings, uh, the endpoints of strings, uh, which are point particles, they actually carry you know, the characteristics of Young Mills gauge fields, which I will you know, explain a little bit more. And then after telling you how Young Mills theory features in these two modern theories in theoretical physics, I will then go on to tell you how the presence of Young Mills theory in supersymmetric QFT and string theory re leads to physical mathematics. Okay, so physical mathematics is a, is a new term. Uh, it's not. It's it's a it's a it's a third discipline, if you will. All right. Uh, it's uh, it's it's um, uh, in, in a nutshell, it's actually um, mathematics that comes from physics. All right, yeah. so it's a bit different from mathematical physics. I'll explain what it means. It's 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 a, it's a 21st century uh, uh, third discipline, you know, that has emerged out of uh, studying the physics of supersymmetric of the field theory and string theory. And I will show you or explain uh, how Young Mills theory plays a very pivotal role in defining this third, you know, discipline of the 21st century. Okay, and then I'll conclude with uh, some of the things that we have talked about. In case you get lost along the way, the conclusion will, you know, sort of summarize everything. All right. Um, okay. So I, I I consider myself a physical mathematician. Okay. So this is sort of my pet area of research, which means I am a physicist first, and I use physical concepts and principles to derive new mathematics. Okay. So so that is sort of uh, what it means to be a physical mathematician. Okay. So I will explain a bit more as we go along. All right. So let us start by talking about Young Mills theory and forces in particle physics. So what is Young Mills theory. So Young Mills theory is actually a generalization of Maxwell's theory of electromagnetism. Okay, it's generalizing electromagnetism so that it can describe the other atomic forces of the universe. 
namely the strong and weak nuclear forces. Okay, so you have the strong nuclear force which binds your protons together in, in the nucleus. And then you have the weak nuclear forces involved in beta decay and you know uh, 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 interactions that involve the electron leptons, the weak uh, particles which in, uh, which interact through the weak nuclear force. Okay, so the key difference is this: while electromagnetism is an abelian U1 gauge theory, so what this means is that if you look at the Lagrangian for the photon, okay, Maxwell's theory itself, if you look at the fields in the Lagrangian in the action, okay, they they are, they are just quantum fields and they are not valued, there are no matrices, you don't see any matrices in the Lagrangian, okay? So, and the reason why there are no matrices is actually uh, Im implicitly, you know, uh, multiplied to each of the quantum field is actually a one by one matrix that is unitary, which is, you know, it's just a number, right? It's a complex number. And so the theory of electromagnetism, if you look at the Lagrangian, it's, it's that. Now, Young-Mills is a generalization of that Lagrangian to include quantum fields that are valued with matrices. Okay, I'll give you an explicit example of what, what I mean in, in a short while, okay? And, and if you do that, when Young Mills uh, came up with this formulation of, you know, a generalization of the uh, Maxwell's theory to include matrices in, in the Lagrangian, uh, specifically matrices which are, you know, two by two special uni unitary matrices and three by three special unitary matrices, okay? Uh, then you are able to use you know, that Lagrangian to describe the weak and the strong nuclear forces respectively. Okay, so that, that is that is the that is the, the shift, okay, from, from going from electromagnetism to describing the strong and the weak nuclear forces. So incidentally, around the late 50s, uh, people in mathematics were also algebraic topology. There's a sub-branch of mathematics whereby people was were, were studying, you know, uh, ways topology using algebra, you know, they came up with this uh, mathematical theory of principal fiber bundles. And incidentally, at the same, around the same time when the physics of Young-Mills theory came about and the theory of principal fiber bundles came about, you know, there was actually sort of a coincidence, you know, of, of, of the, the structure, you know, of, of these two theories. So then people saw that there was a mathematical interpretation of Young-Mills, the physical Young-Mills theory in terms of principal fiber bundles. And here already you can see the hints of why Young Mills theory would have an impact on mathematics. Okay, because to describe it, you can use the mathematical machinery of fiber bundles. And so if the physics tells us something about Young Mills theory, you know, then it will tell us something about uh, the mathematics of principal fiber bundles. Okay, so that is the sort of uh, the nice interplay uh, between Young Mills theory and the principal, the theory of principal fiber bundles in mathematics. Okay. So Let's continue. All right. So as what I said just now, so if you look at say the Lagrangian or the action of uh, Young Mills uh, gauge uh, uh, boson, okay. So the gauge field for Young Mills, it looks something like this. If it was just Maxwell's electromagnetism, then you don't have this trace here. This thing is gone. Okay. So this is just a mathematically sophisticated way of writing F mu V tensor product. I mean contraction with F mu V. Right. The typical uh, kinetic energy term kinetic term for the, the, the gauge boson, okay? The, the, the photon will, have, will not have any trace here. So in Young-Mills theory, you have a trace. And as I mentioned earlier on, the reason for the trace is the following. So implicit in this here lies matrices. Okay, so let's look at how we simplify this thing. So you can look at this expression here. It's actually the same one. Okay, I apologize if it looks a bit different, but it's the same thing. And then you write it out. So the trace here like this. Now, with these fields are appended to it matrices. Okay, so if you write F mu V out here, you can see that there is actually an A index that sums over the gauge group. Okay, in the case of the weak interactions, these matrices would be like the special unitary two by two matrices. In the case of the strong interactions, then these will be three by three special unitary matrices. So you can see that you know, in Young-Mills theory, you have matrices, okay? Uh, that's what's different from theory of uh, uh, Maxwell, all right? And then, of course, this trace, you know, uh, you can, it's it's an inner product of matrices, and then you can eventually, you know, work it out to be uh, without any matrices, okay? But the point is that its initial formulation involves matrices here, okay? Right. So that's where Young-Mills theory differs from Maxwell's theory. So if you look at the standard model, 1974, this was complete. Okay, so you can see where Young-Mills gauge bosons, okay, Young-Mills gauge fields, 
okay, the mediators of force, you know, between the different elementary particles, you know, in the atom. Okay, you can see them feature here. So this table is pretty comprehensive. I, I don't remember all of them. I, I, you know, all the, you know, I don't always remember all of them. So, so it's, don't worry if it's, it's, it looks like it's too busy here. But the point is this. So you can see under the bosons. So these these guys are elementary particles which carry, which are the force mediators. Okay, so the fermions are the elementary particles that make up matter, right? So if you look at an atom itself, uh, within the atom, okay, there's electron. So electron this is an fermion because it's a matter, it's a matter particle. Okay, so if an electron here, okay, and then within the nucleus itself, you have you know the protons and the neutrons, and these can be broken up further, you know, into quarks. Okay, up and down quarks, right? So you see the quarks here, okay, and the forces which you know are, are mediated between you know, the quarks and things inside the nucleus would be, of course, electromagnetism, which is a far-ranging force that works, you know. So protons being positively charged, they have a force of repulsion, right? Now that's mediated by electromagnetism, right? Electrostatic forces, right? And then there is the force which keeps the protons together, even though they are positively charged and, and, and equal in charge and they want to repel, but they're kept together in the nucleus and that's the gluon. Okay, so this guy here is the young mules gauge field for SU3, okay, that we saw the strong interactions, the strong force, okay, so this is young Mills field here, okay, and then so these guys operate on, on the quarks here, and then this is the weak force, it operates on leptons, essentially the electrons, okay, involved in beta decay, and there are three of them here, and then these are described by young Mills gauge field again, but then with the SU2 uh, matrix. Okay, so if you were to write the Lagrangian for the W and the Z bosons, the dynamics of the W and Z bosons, then in this here, the matrices here, you use the SU21. If you want to have a theory of the gluons, then you, you write the SU31 here. Okay, so, and the rest of the, the, the particles that you see here, they only appear in very special types of processes. Okay, they are short-lived. Uh, so they won't be important in our main discussion. And of course, we, we have the Higgs boson. Okay, the Higgs boson gives mass to everything. Okay, it gives mass to these uh, weak gauge fields. Okay, uh, and then they give mass to matter. And, and, and it's often called the God particle because if, you know, there's no mass in matter, everything will just be flying away and, you know, then, the, you know, the universe wouldn't form, right? Everything would just be flying all around. Okay, so the Higgs boson or what we call the God particle here. Okay, so you can see clearly the role of Young Mills is very, very important. It is it's it all it permits through all of st the standard model of particle physics. Okay. And explains all the, the forces that we have that we observe uh, in the atom. Okay, so that was particle physics. Okay, let's move on to talk about how Young Mills features in a more modern theory of supersymmetric quantum field theory. Now to Okay, to motivate um, the, the need to study a supersymmetric quantum field theory, let's look at cosmology. So at the beginning of time, okay, according to the Big Bang theory, space-time started from a single point where gravity and quantum forces were therefore comparable. Okay, gravity is usually very weak, right? So if you look at gravity in, in a normal situation, you know, you put a pin on a table, you know, you put a magnet over it, you know, the pin gets attracted to the magnet, but the Earth is so large, but yet it can't beat the force of attraction by a magnet, you know, over a pin, right? So gravity is usually very weak, you know, in a regular uh, situation is very weak. By the beginning of time, you know, where all of space-time is being crushed into one, the density, the mass density is so huge, gravity and quantum forces were therefore, you know, comparable, okay, in strength. So if we want to understand, you know, what happens at the beginning of time, the origin uh, in, of, of our universe, then, we need to do some kind of unification. We need to have a theory which encompasses everything under a single umbrella, okay? So let's look at some features of unification. So as I mentioned, the strength of coupling of gravity becomes comparable to other forces at the beginning of the universe, okay? So gravity needs to be unified, as I've mentioned. So now if you look at quarks and leptons, lepton, quarks and leptons, these are, you know, matter particles which are involved in the strong uh, interactions, so these are matter particles which are involved in the weak interactions like electrons, for example, okay? So they have, they have different masses, 
and there are many charges, coupling constants in nature, like electric charge E, Newton's gravitational constant, so on and so forth. And for the standard model itself, you will need to input all these things from experimental observation for it to work. Okay, so which means that, you know, um, so, so we, if we were to search for a more fundamental theory, so all these masses, charges, and coupling constants observed in nature should be predicted by a fundamental theory. Okay, that's our hope, that all these values can have a fundamental uh, first principles derivation of their values. Okay, and in that sense, if it's supposed to be a unified theory, then we, it's not unreasonable to expect that particles and the interactions to be manifestation of the same fundamental entity. Right? So if you look at particles, you see the matter particles, okay, let, let's, look, let's look at matter, they're, they're fermions, right? And then the, the interaction, you know, the gauge fields, they are bosons, okay? So uh, a unified theory would be, it's not unreasonable to assume that a unified theory is one whereby there is no distinction between a fermion and a boson, or fermion and a boson are, are pairs. It's not, it's not unreasonable to assume that, and that led people to study supersymmetry, okay? Let, let, let people to study supersymmetry. So attempts to find a unified theory in physics to understand the beginning of time and where, where, where all, all forces were comparably strong, people started to think about supersymmetry. So what's this supersymmetry? Okay, so it's, 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 it's a concept that unifies fermions and bosons. Okay, so it is a theory which you know, says that uh, it's an extension of our physical theory uh, to that, that, will, that will incorporate uh, particles which are super partners of what's already existing. Okay, so fermions and bosons are combined using the concept of supersymmetry, which implies that all fermions and bosons come in pairs with equal masses. Okay, so for example, if you supersymmetrize your regular theory, then for every theory that has an electron in it, if you supersymmetrize it, then it comes with a selectron, okay, which is bosonic in nature. So its spin is integer instead of spin half. Okay, so it's an integer spin. And then same thing, if your theory has a photon, okay, and then you would have a photino, okay? And of course, if you have, you know, a quark, okay, then there will be a squawk, and then a gluon, you know, the strong uh, uh, force uh, that keeps protons together, and then you have a super partner, which is a spin, uh, spin half integer spin uh, gluon, gluino here, okay? So, so, so that's, that's what supersymmetry is. The motivation for supersymmetry is to actually uh, find a sort of a, a more all-encompassing theory which will, you know, have a symmetry between fermions and bosons, okay, in an attempt to unify everything. Okay, and so Young-Mills theory can also be supersymmetrized. So if you remember, we started with this here, okay, we started with this here, all right, this is, say, in four dimensions that we are typically familiar with, that is B4X here, Okay, this is a four-dimensional uh, action. Okay, um, now if you want to supersymmetrize, you know, Young-Mills theory, then you write it as this. Okay, you can look. The form is pretty similar. Okay, it's pretty similar. So instead of F that we saw earlier on, we got a W here. So instead of nothing, nothing meant implicitly it was D4X there. We have a D squared theta. Okay, so this is the the grungeon or the action of, of a supersymmetric version of young mills theory. So what is supersymmetric about it? So you notice that if you look at the measure here, okay, what's really, what's, what's actually the explicitly here is D4X, space time, and then D2 theta. Now, these are extra coordinates in addition to normal space time. This is what we call the measure on superspace. Okay, superspace means you have your normal space time, and then you add two other coordinates or more, two, four, six, depending on how much supersymmetry you want. Okay, and these coordinates are special. They're called Grassmannian coordinates. Okay, so they don't commute, the numbers don't commute. Okay, they are like mm, they are a bit fermionic kind of nature. Okay, so that's how you see it. And then instead of writing your regular field strength, you know, which you saw was F just now, we write a field strength in superspace. So this is what we call a super field. Okay, and inside a super field, the dependence is on X. Okay, X is a space time dependence and it also has a theta dependence. Now, so this was the start of how people first defined supersymmetric version of Young Mills. Okay, and then if you integrate out 
the theta variables, you do get, you are left with the default x, and then you do get an expression that is purely in terms of normal space-time, default x. Okay. Now let's look at this expression now. So initially, if you remember, we only had this term. Okay, now we have this, this whole thing here. Okay, so let's look at this. So we have here, of course, the regular field strength for the gauge field. Now we have this, the gauge, you know. So this is actually a fermion. And this is the super partner of the gauge field. Okay, so it appears very nicely. So you start off with a super symmetric uh, version of, of, of the, 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 the kinetic term or the kinetic Lagrangian for the field strength. And then when you actually uh, determine it by integrating out the, the these, these two variables here in four space-time dimensions, you actually get this. Now, this is an auxiliary uh, field because it's got no connect, no, no, no dynamics. You know, you can integrate out using equations of motion. Now, this term here is just the instant quantum. Okay, so to every Young Mills theory, you can have topological configurations that appear in an instant in time. Okay, so, so this is the theta angle. You could have set this to zero if you do not want to consider topological configurations. So that's 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 fine here. It doesn't affect anything. Okay, so and so you can see, so this is the simplest supersymmetric extension of your Mills theory, whereby you have the gauge fields and its field strength, and then you have the gauge you know, basically, okay, which is the fermion that accompanies the, the gauge field. Okay, here. okay, so you have the boson kinetic term, and then you have the fermionic kinetic term, fermionic superpartner kinetic term for the gauge field boson. Okay, so this is supersymmetric Young Mills. So people have studied such an extension of Young Mills uh, into super space. Okay, and this is the simplest version. People have studied more elaborate versions. So what has come out of studying supersymmetric Young Mills? Well, if you go to higher supersymmetries and you start to compute, you know, scattering amplitudes, scattering amplitudes of such theories, okay, such hypothetical theories, then you find that, you know, the, the result, you can get exact results. You know, there'll be some cancellation of the higher order, you know, scattering um, contributions and you will truncate. And so you can actually get, you know, exact results. So the, 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 the sort of the, the main selling point of people studying supersymmetric theories is that you can get exact results, okay, in perturbation theory, right? So, so that, is, that is why people are still studying this. As to whether it is, you know, a real manifestation of nature, that remains to be seen, okay? As of now, we have not been able to detect, you know, these super partner particles. They are very massive anyway. And so if there's any chance of us detecting them, we have to look at galactic events, okay, which have the kind of energy to detect. All right, so it's still an open question, but nonetheless, this is a sort of theoretical study that people have gone into, and this is where Young Mills features in again. Okay, it's everywhere. Young Mills is just, just everywhere. Okay, so now let's move on to something more interesting. So Young Mills also features in string theory. Okay, so Young Mills also features in string theory. And, and uh, before we describe what how Young Mills features in string theory, let me just give you a very a uh, 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 lightning review of, of string theory. So what is string theory? Okay, so a string theory is an attempt to find this unified theory of gravity and the standard model. And so it was in some sense discovered by accident. Okay, uh, so its tenets are the following. Now, string theory says the following. Okay, so if you look at a point particle moving in space-time, right? So a point particle starts here, it moves in space-time, so it traces a worldwide. So string theory says the following. Okay, if you look at this point much more closely, it's actually not a point. It's actually a very, very, very small string. Okay, it could be a closed string like this, or it could be an open string like this. So how do you visualize this? Now you take a pen or a pencil, and then you, you draw a very short dash, say on the chalkboard, and then you go to the back of the lecture theater. So from a very far distance, a very short dash looks like a point. So that's what string theory says. If you look at a string that's very, very small from far away, it looks like a point. So string theory says that all this time when we understand particle physics, it's only because we have looked at these particles not so close such that we did not see the extended dimensions that they would have if we were to look even closer. Okay. And, and for us to probe into smaller distances, it will mean that we have to smash things at higher energies. And currently at our uh, collider energies, we can only probe up to maybe 10 to the power minus, uh, I don't know, 22, something like this, okay? So not small enough yet to see the external dimensions of a string. So this theory is still up for grabs, okay? So it's still in the air and then, you know, uh, it's, not, it's not 
is it still still a candidate for unified theory? Okay, so so that's what string theory says. If you look at point particles a bit closer, you actually see that it's an extended string. The strings can be open or closed. Okay. So of course, once you have a string and then it can vibrate in all sorts of ways and different harmonics. So when we see, for example, an electron, you know, a quark or something like this, that's because we are looking at a string that's vibrating in a certain kind of harmonic, you know, a certain way that manifests its charge and its mass that we observe as elementary particles. Okay, so that's what that's what uh, string string theory is. Okay, that's what it, it, it um, hypothesizes. Uh, that to do okay to 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 give you the mass and the charge okay. Uh, Professor, how small you have exactly, one minute left. How, Sorry, one minute left. Yeah. Oh, okay. One minute left. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So let me just skip. So anyway, the point is that uh, hang on. Okay. Uh. Okay. 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 Right. Okay. So let me just skip skip all this. I'm sorry. That I, okay. So. Okay, so Young Mills theory also appears in string theory because in string theory there are these things called brains, and then after that you will see that these points, these are Young Mills gauge fields on ends of open strings. Okay, and then you can write down the Lagrangian for 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 you know the the field theory that lives in in these brains. Okay, right. Okay, let me just go to the main gist of the thing. I, I'm sorry I exceeded the time. Okay, so what is physical mathematics? So mathematical physics uses mathematical techniques to find solutions. To physics equations such as a three-body problem, Navier-Stokes equation. Now, physical mathematics, on the other hand, is the formulation of new mathematics by physical principles. So, physical mathematics is a 21st century analog of calculus, which is a mathematical framework formulated by Newton when he studied the physical principles of classical mechanics. Okay, so physical mathematics is subdivided into quantum and string mathematics. Quantum mathematics is mathematics that comes from supersymmetric quantum field theory, and string mathematics is mathematics that comes from string theory. So, you could see that Young Mills was involved in supersymmetric quantum field theory and string theory. And this is how Young Mills plays a pivotal role in deriving physical mathematics. So let me just give you a very short example. If you look at supersymmetric quantum field theory that we saw here, now a more elaborate version of you know, supersymmetric uh, Young Mills theory is this following. We had this, remember, we saw this earlier on. We could add an extra term here to make it more elaborate. Then you get this theory here. Now from this theory here, if you study the stability of the minimal energy states of this supersymmetric Young Mills theory, you know, and then you know, uh, insist on R, R symmetry anomaly cancellation when you quantize the theory, you can actually get this result in mathematics. Okay, so by counting the states before you know you take a take a deformation of, of the manifold, you will get this very mathematically sophisticated kind of uh, object here. After you you know you deform the manifold and the states which are stable survive, then you compute these states, the partition function of these states, and then you get something else. So you end up getting an equivalence of these things from the principle that these minimal energy states are stable under deformation. And mathematically, this is something that no mathematician has ever seen before. So how do we know that we're right? So we start off telling mathematicians that, look, we have this. If you want, you can try and check it and do it your way. And so far, we have always been correct. Okay, so the mathematicians now believe us and they want to learn this. They are, they are trying to learn this thing, okay, of how, how we actually got from here to here. But the reasoning is purely physical. Okay, so this is an example of how Young Mills theory and quantum mathematics comes about. Okay, and look, you know, for more elaborate forms of quantum field theory, you know, n equals to four, you can get such a rich web of mathematical dualities that have never been discovered before. Okay, so this is the this is an example, and a few more examples of, of if you look at high dimensional or five dimensional theories, though not realistic, but they can be theoretically studied, you get all these expressions, which are completely new. No one is, no, it's a mathematically new expressions. They look overwhelming, but essentially you look at this thing here, this MSUN. Now this is the moduli space or the space of solutions of SUN, Young Mills instantons. Okay, solutions of these topological configurations. And these spaces, because they are related to the theory of principle bundles, you know, they, we can say something mathematically about it, which is new for mathematicians also. And it comes again, if you look, energy conservation, stability of minimal energy states, you see all these are physics uh, uh, terminologies, physics concepts, okay? And here even, we have electric magnetic duality, okay? Uh, so all these are physics concepts. So in string theory, okay, we can also do this in string theory. We can look at the brains that you saw early on, whereby the opens, the open strings, the ends, and on the, the D brains, and then they have young Mills uh, fields. 
And then, okay, this looks very complicated, but you know, my point is that this is also mathematically completely novel. But all these arrows that you see here are essentially physics concepts. This S here is actually electric magnetic duality. EB duality, that's it, okay? And here the C going to zero is the energy states, which are minimal energy states, which are, which are stable under deformation of, 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 of the, the manifold of the space, basically. Okay, and one more interesting thing that I want to say here is this theory here, this four-dimensional theory here, there is a lattice in this four-dimensional theory, and it realizes the young baxter equation of statistical mechanics. Okay, the spin sites, they are, they are, this is a realization of some spin spin system here inside. So it's all part of this whole thing here, okay, uh, which, which uh, can be realized in string theory. Okay, so let me just conclude. I think that was a bit much faster than I realized. Okay, so in conclusion, okay, Young Mills theory, which is the backbone of particle physics, is also ubiquitous in more modern theories such as supersymmetric, supersymmetric QFT and string theory. The presence of Young Mills theory in these modern theories has helped revive the deep relationship between physics and mathematics. Uh, first seeded by Isaac Newton, who himself formulated the mathematics of calculus through an attempt to understand the physics of motion. This has led to serious attempts by an increasing number of leading mathematicians to learn the physics or the gauge theory, okay, gauge theory from Young Mills of QFT and string theory. So prominent examples include fields medalists like Ponsevich, Ponyukov, Yao, Deli, among others. So clearly, Young Mills theory is essential to the physical mathematics revolution of the 21st century, right? Where physics is once again a fertile source of new mathematics, like how mechanics was the source of calculus. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoyed the talk. Uh, it went faster than I expected, uh, so I hope it was fine for most people, you could understand what I was saying. If not, you know, please feel free to ask questions. Uh, I'd be more than happy to answer uh, whatever you ask. Okay. Thank you very much, Professor Tam. Yeah, people do understand what you're trying to say because I got a number of questions here. But uh, I can okay. only select two out of many questions because we are running out of time. First question sure, sure. is following. Learning from CM Young's ideas, should physical mathematics be included in the undergraduate physics curriculum? Okay, uh, I would say this, it shouldn't, it need not be compulsory, but it can be for those people who are interested to, to, to know in the 21st century how physics is now giving back to mathematics, okay? So if you want to feel proud as a physicist, then it's something that you ought to know. So if you look at a uh, physics theories, for example, quantum mechanics, right? So quantum mechanics makes use of linear algebra, Hilbert spaces. That was mathematics that was discovered like 30 years before quantum mechanics. Relativity is using Riemannian geometry as a language. And that was also off the shelf from, you know, the late 1800s uh, by, uh, by Riemann. And so for now, we are kind of ahead. You know, we are ahead of, 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 of the math guys. So if you are interested to know how physics is ahead of mathematics, then yes, then uh, a module on this would be crucial. But to understand as a physicist the physical principles, then I would say your regular course in physics today would suffice. If you look at my slides, the things which I talked about, which give rise to all these new, you know, very complicated equations, the physical principles were very simple. Energy conservation, you know, stability of minimal energy states, EB duality, these things, in fact, you know, first or second year students already learn. They are just all these physical principles in a more sophisticated context of supersymmetric field theory and string theory. Okay, so I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, second short question, I'm giving priority to uh, online audience to save some time. Second question is, how has development and the research of the young male theory contributed to new areas of physics and the mathematics and the linkages between them? You have one minute, please. Okay. So as I mentioned, uh, if you saw some of the equations that I showed just now, okay, so in mathematics, for example, people are very interested in the space of solutions of self-dual connections. Okay, a fancy word, it just means instantons. Okay, instanton solutions. So in, in fact, in mathematics, because of Young Mills theory, there is a new branch of pure mathematics called gauge theory. So there are people who actually study, mathematicians who study gauge theory, and that's inspired by Young Mills theory, actually. So it is the theory of principal fiber bundles. And so they are studying all sorts of things that are associated with these principal bundles. And this is how Young Mills theory has um, made an impact by, from because if you study Young Mills theory from a purely physical point of view, you get results that, are, that, were, that came from physical principles that if you were to look at the mathematical theory of 
principal fiber bundles, you won't be able to deduce them. So this is where Young Mills theory, the physics of Young Mills theory, has given rise to developments in mathematical gauge theory. Okay. So uh, now on the physics side, of course, um, uh, developments in physics. Well, I mean, if right, right now there are people who are trying to find some hidden forces. Okay, some hidden forces like a fifth force and everything. Okay, so this is still you know up in the air, but you know so so and that will definitely anything that has a force, anything that involves a force would involve Young Mills theory. Okay, so so this is uh, how Young Mills theory has influenced uh, both currently influenced both mathematics and also influenced both you know new physics. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Tan, for great fundamental talk. Thank you very much.